Hey, welcome back everyone. So we're going to do some uh, Rate My Base here. Uh, this is the account we're using. We're using uh, Bladestorm, level 56. Gear, nothing really special. Um, he does have added boost on his gloves. So nothing really great yet for inventory. Look at the spells real quick over here. Most likely we'll be using the Firestorm, the Sword Rain, and um, the Hammer Strike. But we'll see. And then again, take a quick look here at the troops. So we're going to go and attack our first base. We're going to do um, a couple of these in a row since I do have like... 15 people that want to be attacked. Uh, first person up is King's Kills a Lot. So, taking a look, he's got five stars. Uh, very impressive. A good amount of loot if we can get past some of his defenses. So, pretty much by default. Hmm, interesting. What I probably would, I don't know. Um, there's any way to get another road to make it more over here because this guy can't hit this section over here. But if we, like we shifted it over one, he'd be able to hit it. Uh, but I don't think he has any spare roads anywhere that he could really change um, because he does have this section right here, which he has all his towers there. So lately, I've been working with. Um, an interesting strategy is using the mortar for a lot of the harder bases. Uh, it's been doing really well since it has a long range and it does a slash lingering effect. So the goal is to have the mortar come up here, uh, attack the troops that are around here, and it should be pretty effective because he doesn't have that many pyromancers and he doesn't have any ranged troops to really mow down the mortar. Um, so the mortar is going to be fairly effective against his mortar, against all his paladins, so you can see there. Um, even though he is resistant to arrows, the arrows still do a decent amount of damage and chop the guy down. Uh, the main thing you have to worry about is the pyromancers when you're using mortars as attack. And you don't use that many mortars because the mortars only trigger on units. They don't attack buildings. Um, so yeah, you have, you have to kind of like plan the mortar out. You don't want to really spawn a mortar in the beginning right away because you'll typically have buildings in the way. So if we spawn a mortar, the mortar's gonna like walk up and just like sit by this barricade and just like stay here until he finds units to attack. Um, and then we're probably gonna want to have cannons to help destroy some things, um, but maybe not actually, since he doesn't have a firebolt tower in a position where we can't get to it ever. Like if if this road was moved over one, it was right like this cannon was right here, and if it was a firebolt cannon, we would have to bring cannons to shoot that guy down. But since it's way over there, we don't have to worry about that cannon at all. There's nothing like hard to reach firebolt tower anywhere, um, so it allows me to bring in pyromancers versus a cannon. And the reason I want to bring in pyromancers here is because they're very resistant to fire damage, so they're very resistant to the firebolt cannons. Uh, they're going to be resistant to the pyromancer he has. And then they also do a really good job against taking out the paladins. And then they are resistant to poison. So they're a very strong unit uh, in game because a lot of mortars, a lot of firebolt cannons. So he has resistance to the two main things and a big resistance too. So we're able to keep the setup like this. And we're going to use. Hammer Strike, Firestorm, and uh, Sword Rain, since we don't really have anything else unlocked. And we're going to go and attack like this. Uh, the initial strategy will be probably bringing out um, a bunch of knights and a few pyromancers to get past this first area and hopefully take out some of these things. And then we'll bring out a mortar. So we're going to go and attack. Hopefully he's not online right now. I like the road setup though. The road setup looked nice. We'll go into more of that once we get through here. So I'm going to sit back here. I'm going to bring out my uh, my mortar now. Now that stuff has come up over here. So you can see the mortar is going to start to do work.
And thankfully I was able to take out all those mortars with uh, one of my firestorms. So now the mortars coming along with us. I'm going to come back here and oh, no ranged troops in that wave. So it looks like he has more um, more paladins and a split of ranged troops in different waves. So I'm holding on to the sorting because it won't really do anything against the paladins. I'm going to bring in another mortar back there. I don't know what troops he has coming up in that situation. Um, with this current spell setup that I have, I really have to take down the gargoyle towers with my hero. Because I have no cannons or anything really blunt damage to take care of those guys without my hero. Everything else I can pretty much run down here. So now I'm close up here so I can get up here and take out these guys. Because his mortars will be doing a lot of damage to my infantry troops. I'm going to try and lure them a little bit over here. I've got close up into his base, so now I'm going to allow my um, ranged troops and my infantry troops to come up and take care of those guys. Because I can kind of just like mess around and toy with these paladins so they can't really hit me while my spells are on cooldown. Then I'll come back here and, and burn them with little assistance to let the mortar come back. So you can see his troop formation isn't um, the greatest, and that's why we're able to get fairly far with a, a low B account. This account is nowhere near strong, in my opinion. Uh, but there was a lot of advanced tactics used in this fight to get this far. Um, I'm going to get a decent amount of money out of here, and we may gain a trophy or two. I didn't really look at the trophies, because I'm not really mattering. Now we lost 8 trophies, which is still not bad. We gained 100,000 loot. I uh, got fairly far, 49%. So a couple things that stand out there is that the um, troops and the waves, it seemed to be too paladin heavy, and that you want to have a little bit more um, ranged troops in there. You want to have a little bit more pyromancers, especially those if you have them leveled up a little bit, because then the sword ring won't be able to kill them in one hit. If you have a Pyromancer that doesn't die in one Sword Rain, that's a huge, huge boost in your defense. So upgrade your Pyromancer as soon as possible, and you are going to be using him a lot in the end game when you're fighting other players that are around 3,000 trophies. Um, so upgrade the Pyromancers, add a little bit more Pyromancers. I typically like to have one Pyromancer in about each wave. The road setup for this setup is pretty good um, but it needs more range troops because it takes a while to get up here and then to get past these guys you have to take a lot of damage uh, from the fireball towers and so what I might do is I might want to swap one of the fireball towers and put it over here in this corner to cause some burning on the hero once he gets here because having two of them fairly close by I think one's there and one's there um, you can firestorm both of them roughly and kill almost both of them in one firestorm. So if you separate them a little bit more, put one over here, you're going to cause burning effect down here, and then you're also going to have more burning effect for when they get up here, uh, which will be, in my opinion, a little bit better. Adding a little bit of pyromancers out of the paladins, maybe take, take two of the paladins out, and uh, two of the paladins in two of the waves, and add two more pyromancers. And then look around and see if there's any way you can add uh, even a little bit of archers or arb blasters. Typically, you'd want to add an arb blaster somewhere. Um, maybe take out the froster because the frosters aren't very effective in um, defense at this stage. Later on, when you get a lot of skull towers, frosters will become a little bit better, uh, but still not not that good. Um, so I probably would take out the Frosters for our Blasters, and Archers are decent as well. Um, if someone's going to attack you with long-range troops, though, like the Mortar, the Archers probably won't be able to attack them, so they won't really be effective. So our Blasters are 
better, but they do cost a lot more. They cost four points to put into the waves. But that's what I would do. I'd swap out a few Paladins for Pyromancers, and then swap out the uh, Frosters for our Blasters. Somewhere around to that. Uh, otherwise, it's good. And you can see that's a pretty effective way to attack a stronger opponent, uh, is using the Mortar. And my Mortar is only level 1, too, so once you level it up, it gains a lot more life and has more... Um, more like longevity, it'll actually stay alive rather than dying to a couple pyromancers or you know archers. So uh, this base right here, pretty solid, but some uh, improvements that I could see, like I talked about, probably give about an eight out of ten. Um, we did get about fifty percent weight through, so I think trying those different things. And I don't like the water tower whatsoever. Um, the water tower dies way too quick, no life. It does a very, very small effect. Even though it was in the corner here, I was still able to do a firestorm and hit like all these corner buildings and also kill the mortars. Oh yeah, the other thing too is I noticed in one of the waves there was like double mortars. You don't you don't need double mortars at all. Um, only put one mortar in the wave and spread the other mortar out to a different wave. Two mortars in one wave is it's overkill. Too much poison um, damage there. Because the, the poison effect will take effect, and then it sits on the ground for a while. So you don't even have to be, like, really right there. It will do an area effect poison, and the poison will last for, like, five seconds or something right like that. And you can't be, like, double poison. So only one mortar per wave. So that's going to do it. Again, uh, pretty decent base. I like the road setup. Just needs more ranged troops. And overall, I give it an 8 out of 10. Thanks, guys.